Good morning, SMP Nation. How are we feeling? It is a brand new Tuesday. I'm so excited that you are all here with me today. What's going on, guys? Fill me in. Let me know what's been going on this week. We have been so busy over here prepping because you guys know what next week is. Do you know what it is? If you don't, let me tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. Quilt Fest is happening next week, March 13th through the 17th, eight hours of full stream education, special pricing, all the goods are going to be happening next week. And you can get involved in the fun right now, today, by voting. Now, I voted. Roger, did you vote today? I totally voted today. You totally voted today? Yeah. Kyle, did you vote today? I did. He voted today, too. Andrea voted, too. We are, we're all voting. I for... have my favorite. Do you have your favorite? Yes. What's your favorite? <laughs> I can't say. Okay, You're we gonna won't have say. To go to the vote page. To <clears throat> the, uh, yes. So you'll have to go find your favorite. We all have ours that we're voting for, and I am overwhelmed by all the amazing quilts. I can't decide. It's really hard. I'll sit on the voting page for like five, ten minutes, and I can't. I just I can't pick one. So that is why you have two votes. You can do two votes every single day. Find the quilt that you love the most, or if you have a friend that's in um, and submitted a quilt, vote for them, you know, share the love. If you know anybody in SMP Nation that entered a quilt, vote and just get out there. It's so much fun to get involved. And Barb Tori said, glad everyone has voted there. We've got everybody. I've seen so many comments of people saying that they voted. So it's just it makes my heart happy to see that everybody's getting involved in the contest. But yeah, it's Guys, we are in the last stretch up until Quilt Fest. I've got all my schedules here, all of our giveaways that we're doing. I'm not going to show you guys yet because those are going to be a surprise. But so much is it coming your way next week. And I am so, so excited. And we have all worked so hard to make sure that this is such a great event for you guys. So I hope you join us and learn something and make something while you're watching. I mean, that's that's the best way to do it, right? So with that, that's the main thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, if you guys have any questions about Quilt Fest, feel free to comment. I'll answer down below while Rosemary's on because... It is our part two series, part two of our series for Serger Boot Camp. Now, you guys loved last week's episode, and I am so happy that you did. I loved it too. I feel 
way more confident in getting into surging now. And I definitely want to try some of the things that Rosemary has taught us so far. But we couldn't just finish with one episode. So we had to do one more. So we are doing it today. Oops. We're doing it today. And Rosemary is back and she is ready to teach us more. And we've got some pictures to show you. We have some samples and some really amazing techniques that Rosemary has put together to show you and also show that surging and working with cover stitch and all of that is not as hard as you think. So with that, just a couple quick things. Make sure you're subscribed because if you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell, you will know when we go live next week. So right when Quilt Fest starts, we'll be back and you can tune in and watch with us and hang out with us. Also, just a reminder, there is no show for Blaine this week, so no SMP Live happening this Thursday because these guys are going to be going over and setting up for Quilt Fest and setting up the studio. So we are just busy bees over here. I got my coffee. I'm all fired up this morning. I'm very energetic today. <laughs> so I just want to get right into today's episode and chat with Rosemary because it is so amazing. All of the links from today's show, all the products that we're going over, um, all the information for Rosemary can be found in the description box right down below. So if you're watching on a computer, it'll be right below where our channel name is. You can just see all the information where the description box is. And if you're on a phone, you can just minimize it and look down where the other videos are going to be and it'll be right there for you. So, and TV, I, I don't know about TV, probably down below, I'm going to assume, but yes, so much info, so many things to go over, and we're just going to get right into it because Rosemary, she set the bar so high when it comes to providing the best education. I sit here and chat with her, you know, before we were talking yesterday, and I just, I don't know, I love learning from people who are so passionate about, you know, their hobbies and the things that they love to do, so that's what inspires me. So I hope that inspires you a little bit too, but with that, we're going to go ahead and get started and bring Rosemary in the house to continue our serger boot camp and finish strong. I'm just so excited. Guys, let's get into it. Let's talk to Rosemary right now. Rosemary, you're back. Good morning. Hi, how is everybody? I am I'm so excited. excited you're here. Everybody you're is here. so excited you are on here today. And I just want you to get right into it and get on started and tell us what you're going to be talking to us about today. Well, I'm going to just briefly cover what we did last week and just a quick synopsis of what it was. And then I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to go from an overlock to a cover stitch. Now, granted, I use a baby lock, and that is the only machine I teach on, unless somebody lives close by and brought over a manual a machine of a different type, then I would help them, but I, it's impossible to teach on every single one of them, so, and I've been sort of a baby lock snob for about, oh, I don't know, 20 some years, yeah, so, um, that is what I teach on. The, what we're doing here is just a uh, quick overview of what surgeons can do. So it's not really a lesson, but it's um, it's just what they can do. And honestly, I could be here, I don't know, hours and hours for weeks on end and, and not give you all the info what they can do. Yes. I read somewhere, uh, one of the comments last week was, how many stitches can this machine do? The manual will tell you it has 87 built-in stitches, 87 combinations of of things and just straight stitches. Not straight in a line, but you know, just using one particular set. However, I know by playing with this, I can do a lot more than 87 because I sit with this and I create new stitches. So yeah. in my class, I teach one that is the thread. Now, what about the other so bizarre. It's, it's only two threads like and it is really weird but it comes out to be a beautiful stitch. And it's just, I, I created it just by playing with the machine. And sometimes I create other things by maybe I had a setting wrong and I went, oh, my setting was wrong, but I ended up liking the mistake. Uh, so, you know, and then I'll write those down and just let everybody else, you know, let my students know what that mistake was and how to create that. And that, so it wasn't really a mistake. It turned into something really good. So um, last week, we I showed you basically what Overlock does. And I, I created a little, a very little sample 
of basically on the baby lock what A, B, C, and D does. For those of you who don't know about what that means when I say A, B, C, or D, if you have a manual serger with tension dials, to get a even four thread, you need to have your tension dials uh, for most machines set on four all the way across. And that means everything's going to stitch out balanced and even. However, if you want to change something, maybe go to a three thread or a rolled hem, you need to adjust those dials. With a baby lock, you go from A to D and then change maybe your stitch width and your stitch length. And that's basically all you do. So it's all built in. Um, a lot of people want to have the control of tension dials. So with the baby lock, you don't need that. So I do talk a lot about baby lock because it's what I do. I don't work for baby lock. Um, although I send a lot of business their way, uh, but I teach on baby lock. So that's one of the differences. And my lessons are uh, within my Roma Serger University group. So that's the group that um, Kennedy has put up for you. And many of you joined last week and thank you very much. I uh, had a lot of books go out and uh, more coming from the publisher. So uh, we'll be able to have a lot on hand. And um, so I'm gonna show you a little bit more about uh, what this machine does. And there again, it is baby lock, but your machine, if you have a manual machine, can possibly do the exact same thing. It's a matter of working with your tension, going over your manual to see what you need to switch in order to get these certain stitches. Granted, some of them you probably won't get uh, because some of them are very, uh, just particular to a baby lock. So um, one of the, and I'm gonna switch cameras here because I actually set up my tripod and another camera. So I think I can just switch to it right from here. I hope you don't lose me but we'll see here. Um, there we go. So one of these, um, if I can just hold this up here. When I set the machine up last week for a basic four thread, this is a basic overlock stitch, a four thread. When I switch my dial from A to B, I get a three thread. That is the stitch that's really great for um, lighter weight garments, knit garments, baby clothes, doll clothes, when you don't need the strength of this extra needle over here on A. Or otherwise on a manual machine, it's four, 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 and four all the way across. B is you take out one needle. Then by switching my stitch length to rolled hem, I go to C, and that is a balanced hem. So one thread shows on top, a different thread shows on the bottom. So here's upper looper lower looper. Great for those times when you would want um, a reverse, maybe reverse napkins or dinner cloth or excuse me, dinner. Um, can you think of that word? Uh, tablecloth. And this is D where it's a rolled hem. And that means that the upper looper thread rolled all the way over to the back and no um, lower looper shows. On a manual serger, you would crank up your upper looper tension. Uh, excuse me, really, uh, you'd make it go look lower and then your lower looper tension you'd crank up really high to get that thread to wrap all the way over so what it is it's just manipulation of your different settings to get your different stitches these are wonderful to do so this is just a short review of those stitches and then i had uh, sent in a chart to uh, kennedy and made up that chart that shows you all the different type of stitches for overlock well not all of them but many of them. Another thing you can do by manipulating stitches is create your own. So this little stitch here, I'm hoping you can see that pretty well. This is a stitch I created simply by stitching a rolled hem over the top of another stitch and used woolly nylon. And it came out, they look like little fans. And I do a double rolled hems. Here's another example of it. I hope you can see that pretty well. There you go. So this one was a three thread wide with a rolled hem over it. So don't be afraid to play with your machines. They, that's where you get really creative with this stuff. Now, many people have asked on this machine here, why does this machine have eight threads? As you can see on the stand here, there's eight. Do you use all eight at once? No, you can, but you don't. Uh, 
on a, uh, you know, when you're normally serging a garment, you don't, it's really for decorative purposes. But the beauty of this, it's two machines in one, four thread overlock here with four threads. This side is cover stitch. So some people have said, well, why don't I get two different machines? Good question, because when you set up for overlock and one cover stitch needle and your chain looper, you get a particular stitch that is used in all garment construction, uh, especially pants. This is a five thread or six thread safety stitch. This stitch here, this is your regular overlock. This is an extra stitch created by your cover stitch needle. And here's your chain looper. That creates that additional safety you need. It's in all pants from the crotch seam up to the waist. And on denim uh, jeans, it's always on the side seam. Usually on the outside, the inside seam doesn't always have that, but this is called a safety stitch. So if a stitch rips out, you're still covered with all these stitches there. So that is a very, very strong stitch. It's also good if you're making um, cushions for, say, um, you know, outdoor wear, or excuse me, not outdoor wear, but outdoor cushions, uh, couch cushions, anytime you're making something like that where you need a really strong seam for something that's sat on a lot, you know, that's the type of seam you want. So that is the beauty of combining the stitches on this machine. When I showed you how to do the overlock and I showed you some of the projects I did, some of them were using different feet. On the cover stitch side on here, you know, threading this side and here, you get to use things such as this. This is a double fold bias binder. This is a seam allowance guide when you're doing cover stitch. There's some pretty big tools and some of these are the fairly new ones. This is a single fold bias binder and I will show you what some of these do. Um, I sent in another chart to Kennedy on some of what these stitches do. Like this is makes your t-shirt neckline beautifully. It adds that ribbing that you need around the um, neckline and it can be done in one fell swoop from the front to the back. It's all done. So these machine, these tools are really fabulous. So I hope you can see that pretty good there. I tend to go off camera a bit. So lots of tools for different things. Um, so I'm going to show you in a bit also some of some little uh, things that I like to use on my serger. And then I'm going to show you ways to use it. Now, I'm going to switch cameras again and go back to my other one here. Just a moment, please. So in a, in a minute, I'm going to go from the overlock like I was set up previously to cover stitch. And I'll have um, Kennedy chat with you for a minute while I make that switch. I would show you, but then again, it's not a lesson. It's just know that it can be done in about two minutes flat, if that, including changing the needle. Sometimes people want to see what you can do with that cover stitch. Well, first of all, obviously you can make a t-shirt. And that last tool I showed you is you use that when you're putting on that neckline. Now, for those of you who have grandkids or little kids at home still, and when the temperature changes in the fall, you have all these t-shirts that they wore that um, get put aside for the cold weather. And pretty soon, next thing you know, they've outgrown it and you've got a lot of t-shirts. What if you took that t-shirt and added long sleeves? So this is actually a sock. It's a pair of socks for about maybe a four-year-old. And I cut off the foot at the ankle and I cover stitched it right back into the sleeve right here on that, the cover stitching that was already done on the sleeve. I stitched it in. So now I have a long sleeve t-shirt. So now you can use up those t-shirts that they wore during the summer. And if you have an embroidery machine, you can put in an embroidery right here in the center that matches the designs of the socks. This one's got a little flower. You can put so some embroidery machines, you know, um, have scanning abilities so you can scan a design and stitch it on. So these things are so easy when you use a serger. 
last Saturday, this past Saturday, I taught a class on my surgery group. I'm making a pillow, but it was not just a pillow, it was using invisible thread in the surgery. And many times it gets scary using a thread like invisible nylon thread because you can hardly see it. It is really almost invisible. But again, I use both sides of the machine, one to put in a zipper. And then one, the fluffy yarn here is flat locking. And then once I finish the top on these little curvy lines, I uh, turn the fabric over after I stabilized it and I stitched from the back side and I made a narrow cover hem with all these wavy stitches with a decorative thread. So easy to make something like this. My class was two hours, but then again, it was explaining everything. So you could do this in probably less than an hour for yourself and just putting stuff in your pillow form. And you've got a really nice designer pillows. And if any of you have been to stores that sell home decor items like this, like we used to have one called Calico Corners. This pillow at that store would sell for about $80. Uh, it's custom. You can't find one like it on the market. So that's the type of thing you can be creative with on your serger is making things like this. Uh, last week I showed the white uh, one with the black yarn in it that I had done. And I like this one even better. So many, many things you can do with a serger that um, you just can't do with a sewing machine, but yet they still go hand in hand. One of the tools you get in the kit is uh, two belt loop makers. And there again, if you have a manual serger, you need to check with the manufacturer or your dealer to see what type of tools that are available for your serger. Some have uh, a few available to them and some unfortunately don't have any tools, which is really too bad because the tools are what really what make, you know, for me, make this serger. So you've got two types of, uh, two sizes of belt loop makers. So you can make your own belt loops. So this happens to be stretch fabric. So this can be a real stretchy one. You can use belt loops for all sorts of things. People think when they first hear the term, you know, the word belt loop maker on they, their first thing is, well, I don't make pants, but I need to, you know, use belt loops. That's not it. Belt loops can be for all sorts of things, headbands, all sorts of things. And as I showed you this project last week, this is just a simple zipper bag. I teach at my uh, dealer event classes, making a narrow belt loop. And in the looper, the chain looper, I put in fusible thread. And then when I went to lay the pattern out, you just fuse, you, um, weave the belt loops in and you fuse them down and they're there to stay. So, and it looks like from the top of it, it looks like they're top stitched down, but that's just how you created the belt loop. And of course the handle of the belt loop, that's one of them. And then this was the other belt loop. This is the wide belt loop. Uh, and again, all woven to create another little bag. Those things are a lot of fun. They're, like I said, the, It'd be almost impossible to show you every project. And the reason I show projects is because there's a technique within that project. Little girl sundresses that have all the shearing on top. You can make that. When I first went to look for my granddaughter, some uh, sheared tops, they were kind of expensive. And I thought, well, I'm going to make my own. So I found fabric that had shearing done. And at that time it was selling for about 40 cents an inch. So if I needed say 25 inches, I'm paying 40 cents times that 25. And I thought, well, I could certainly make it. So I got out my um, pin tuck foot and I ran, I stitched rows with elastic thread inside the little pin tuck opening and stitched this down with a narrow cover hem and when I got through with all my rows, I had a lot of cording, the elastic cording left over, and I pulled on all of it at once, and it gathered up and made a little sheared top. Rolled him at the top of it, rolled him at the bottom. You can add little belt loop straps if you will. So if you wanted to do, this doesn't match, but if you wanted to do little straps, 
you can now you've got a belt loop maker to make that. So the entire dress was made on a serger. So no longer are sergers made just to finish garments or finish the fabric. It, there's a myriad of things you can do. So um, I'm going to set up for cover hem in a second, and then we'll show you the chart of some of the basic things that you can do. So Kennedy, if you want to take over here for a second, I will switch <laughs> back <laughs> to uh, cover stitch here and see if there's any questions or anything, but I'll do this real quick. And um, I can do it while you're talking if they can still see. No, that's perfectly fine. I'll take you off just real quick and see if they have any okay. questions and then we'll come right back. All right, you guys. So one of my favorite things that um, Rosemary mentioned was that sergers and sewing machines really go hand in hand. And I always think of sergers as like something that you never really knew about, but you really need in your life. Cause you know, you look at your shirts and they, you know, they're all surged and you can see the stitches and so many things that you have already in your home. And, you know, the example that she brought up of the pillow where you would go to, um, she said Calico Corners, but I mean, even any um, home furniture store or home decor store and things are so expensive. It really is tough to find, you know, inexpensive home decor or, in, you know, interior decorations or things like that that is reasonably priced. And so why not make your own, right? And it's just, and it's fun. And that way you can say, hey, I made this. And I feel like it's just such a productive way, um, you know, to be more conscious and, <clears throat> you know, even a little bit more eco-friendly and by preserving, you know, using the same fabrics, recycling fabrics. I mentioned last week that you can even go to thrift stores and find clothing or pants or fabrics there at a thrift store that are really inexpensive and customize things to your own liking. And I don't know, I just really love it. And I love all the examples that Rosemary shows because it's just, there's so much variety that one machine can do. And especially what you're going to see next when she switches over to the cover stitch machine, which is so easy, by the way, she's, she's super quick with it, but there's just, there's so many options when it comes to a serger and you can finish projects with a serger. It's not just a, you know, construction machine it doesn't just put pieces together you can finish things you can quilt on a serger did you guys know that I think we're gonna be you might learn a little about a little bit about that next week but we'll see um but yeah there's just there's so much so many things to do well, wolf guy said she has yet to go thrifting guys little known fact about me thrifting is one of my favorite things ever to do in the world I love thrifting it is so much fun and you know it's unique. Everything you find is, you know, one of a kind. And so I love thrifting and finding, you know, unique pieces that nobody else has. I love it. I'll have to show you guys a picture of my room because I have so many little knickknacks and things <laughs> that I've picked up over the years from thrift stores. It's, it's fun. It's like a little, it's my little hobby, I guess you could say. And now that I've, you know, been so involved in sewing and embroidery and serging, I'm like, we can mix them together, you guys. We really can. <laughs> That's my way of thinking about it. <laughs> Kay said 32 years ago, she made her veil for her wedding dress with the serger. Guys, there's so many different things that you can do with a serger. And that's just, that's the whole point of these, this series that I wanted to do is to show you guys that there's so many different things. And also, I just want to put it out there. If you guys are interested in a serger, I highly suggest giving us a call 1-800-401-8151 because Nick caught wind of our show today and he wanted to give you guys a great special. So if you are interested in any of the baby lock sergers you see or even accessories or anything like that, give us a call and we will get you taken care of and get you some good accessories or a brand new serger that is superb and Takeover Tuesday approved, I promise. Um, but yeah. Diana D said garage sales too. Exactly. I mean, there's so many places that you can upcycle and, you know, reuse and refine fabrics. It's, it's great. I love it. Especially I know one time I saw, um, I think we were, I was just scrolling on our, um, Instagram and I saw that somebody took an old comforter, but like transformed it into a quill and it was just so beautiful. And I love that we give things new purposes, right? Right. And if you were here when we were talking to, Amanda Carita from Amanda's Bundles, she um, provided a lot of information about, you know, how many, how much goes into landfills every year. And I don't remember the exact number, but it was so much, so many. And it was, I think it was like 10 or 11 tons of 
just trash or things that don't get used or clothing and anything like that that just goes into landfill. So anyway, even the smallest differences, even the smallest changes in your lifestyle really can make a difference and help keep things out of the landfill and recycle and reuse and all that. So that's my assignment for you guys today. <laughs> all right. I think Rosemary is ready and back. She has switched over to the cover stitch. So now we're going to go to the cover stitch side of the Triumph, which is what she's using today. And yeah, let's get back to Rosemary. All righty. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've been finished with this. Like I said, it only takes, it, it really takes two minutes. And during class, we take, like I said, about 45 because I go through every particular step of this machine. And as you saw, when I was set up for four thread, I had these four threaded and I'm just, you know, for overlock. What I did, I cut those out, took them out really quick. I moved three needles over here because I have needles. Um, there's five places for needles, three for cover stitch, and you can use one, two or three. And then over here is a two for overlock. So you do need to take those out. I locked my blade down. I locked my upper looper down so it does not come up and hit the table. And you certainly don't want to use your blade during cover stitch. So you lock it down. Baby lock has this all built in. I put on my cover stitch table here. And now I have this big flat area to work with. When I first had my Evolve, I had only about oh two inches if that to use for uh you know big projects i had to roll them up now i've got five and a quarter inches over here and all this space to use when i'm doing cover stitch because i like to meander when i'm surging and especially if i'm doing decorative cover stitch and i need that room to be able to meander i call it free free motion surging so i can you know do that now i'm going to walk everything up unlock it here. here. Uh, this is your tension dial. This is very simple, lower tension for cover stitch, higher tension for just chain. So I keep it about a two or three. So that way I don't have to, you know, adjust any other dials. Now, when you are starting with cover stitch, one thing you have to do, and, and especially for those of you who do have the baby lock and you struggle with cover stitch, I have my cover stitch foot on here, which is a narrower foot, and it works really well with a lot of the attachments. But one mistake people make is when they're threading the needles, then they turn the hand wheel and the thread with the, excuse me, the needles with the thread on it goes down below the plate. It picks up the chain looper thread. And you don't want to do that because it's, there's, that's not a bobbin. When you are surging uh, for cover stitch, you have to start with your threads on top of the foot over here they don't go underneath then when you take your first stitch either by you know pressing on your foot control or turning by hand then the, these threads here will drop go they'll go below the plate they pick up the looper thread and they start off making that perfect cover hem but you have to do it on fabric can't do it by itself remember it's not a bobbin so i'm because if you don't it's going to get a big make a big mess and you don't want that to happen so I took a couple stitches here. I cut my thread right off at the top of the foot. And then I surge. Oop, I have my differential feet up. There we go. And notice also, this is three needles. Three needles on a triple cover hem, it doesn't chain off. It might chain off for about a half inch or an inch, but it, when you see the thread out behind your foot straight, that's perfectly normal. So now I have a, this is the back. This is my cover stitch. That's the back of it. That can be the back or it can be decorative by sewing on the wrong side of the fabric and turn it over and putting decorative thread in your chain looper. You can do so many things with this. One thing that I had uh, shown let me get my chart out here. I sent this chart in and I'm going to back up here with my camera to show you a little bit about what this is. So this is my chart for a few different cover stitches. Just a few things that you can do with it. Let me go back a little bit more. Okay. 
double fold bias binder. Here's one on knit, on woven. Of course, the belt loops in two different sizes. And cover stitch on knits. Now, when you're doing cover stitch on knits, you want to use a narrow cover hem. If you use wide, like your C1 and C3 needles, you're going to get a big tunnel through here, like a big pin tuck. And you don't want that. On most knits that are really soft, you want to use just a narrow cover hem. This one's a wide cover hem using one of the tools called a feller, a downturn feller. And this is wide because this is a very stable woven fabric and it's a lot heavier. It's not going to stretch out. So the center of this stitch will lay really flat. So that's using a downturn feller as well as doing a cover hem on a knit is using a downturn feller. Hemmers, there again, this was the eight thread. Oops the eight thread um, stitch. Sorry about that. My camera wants to go crazy here. There we go. And this is the neckline. When you want to do a t-shirt of any type, the, adding your own trim here, your own bias is so easy. It, it's just crazy how easy this is. You're going to sew one shoulder together. You start at the open end of one shoulder. You surge that binding all the way around, stop at the next shoulder, and then that shoulder is sewn closed, and your whole neckline is done. These are so fast, it's, it's unbelievable. Now with this particular stitch here, this is one thing I really wanted to show you, is, I said if I can get my cording to my camera to behave, right here, sorry about the cameras, that's in the way, there we go. What are, what are, why do you have different cover stitches? Why the, so many needles? In the industry, sewing industry, uh, when think garments are made, they normally use a triple cover hem for wovens, heavy knits. Uh, say if you um, look in the men's department and they, you see some of those really heavy, bulky t-shirts, they are normally done with a triple cover hem because that knit is so strong. But also it, these are for woven fabrics. A wide cover hem in the garment industry is for wovens, mostly men's ready to wear, such as tailored shirts and so forth, or a very strong woven fabric. If you want to use it for home decor, it's also used with many of the attachments, such as belt loops. The narrow cover hem is used for knits. If most ladies uh, ready to wear has a pretty soft t-shirt knit and other things, you want a narrow cover hem for that. Also in baby clothes and children's wear, it's normally a narrow cover hem. You also use this for the sleeves and of course the hem. So narrow cover hems um, are for the softer fabric so you don't end up with that tunneling. So as you can see, all three have a particular use. It's not just your preference of what you want to use but they all have a use according to the type of fabric that they are. This sample here is one that you can use a rolled hem with, with a cover stitch for an heirloom look. This is the reverse side, which can be the top. And this is actually the top side. You can barely see the stitches with a rolled hem, but it just gives you a little bit more decorative use. So the, uh, you know, it's unlimited what you can really do with a serger here. So I'm going to put this part down and Kennedy does have this chart, so we can put those up later uh, to give you a, a closer eye, uh, look at those things. But the idea is it is so easy to switch from one half of this machine to the other. And then in combination, it's, it's, just, in, it's just incredible. I use them in combination when I, and I put decorative thread in my loopers, in the three loopers, other thread that will match it, possibly rayon embroidery thread in the needles to get a really cool edge. And the sample I showed last week was, it would be great for a tablecloth, uh, something like that, so, or a jacket. So the possibilities are endless. And there again, I'm, you know, I'm really, um, bias towards a baby lock because it's what I absolutely love and have sewn on 
and taught for 20 some years. So you'll hear me talk a lot about this. This machine has a um, automatic needle threader as well over here. And somebody asked why I didn't use it. I don't use it during class right now because there's 10 LED lights here. And this is so bright that it interferes with the lighting when um, I'm filming. So I have to cover it up with black fabric. But yes, the automatic needle threader works for all five needles and it is fabulous. So and the needle um, threading mechanism is all over here. And it also has a speed control. So I don't want to really demo the machine, you know, as far as because I'm not selling this. I'm just showing you how cool this is. Now, if I want to go back, say I'm through with my cover stitch, I will just cut my threads and switch back to overlock. One thing to remember for those of you who have this machine, remember there's no tensions. These, this is all on a cable system, but there are tensions on cover stitch. This is a tension dial here for your chain looper. And these three through here are tension, the needle tensions. And there's a dial over here to adjust the needle tension. Just like on a sewing machine, you have to have the presser foot up to thread these. If it's down, you really need to cut the thread and start all over. Uh, this one here, the chain looper, is very particular in how it's threaded. And it will let you know right away if you don't, uh, if you haven't done that right. So press your foot up, get into a habit of use, having that up anytime you thread any machine. It really needs to be up because there are tension discs in here. And I like to liken the tension to um, tension disc to, um, let's say if I took two spools of thread here. These are your tension discs. Of course, they're, it's over-exaggerated, but when your foot is up, see, there's a space right here. Oops, see, I guess you can't see that. I'm sorry. So there's a space right here. It's open. So when your foot is up, your thread lies inside this open space. And then when you close your, put your foot down, it, the tension disc closes, and it puts just the right amount of tension on that thread to form that perfect stitch. If your foot was down and see that disc is closed right here, that thread's gonna lie on top of that and really mess your stitch up when you go to take off. So, and it won't fix it because even if you raise your foot up and said, uh-oh, and tugged on your thread, it probably won't slip back into the disc. So foot has to be up for all threading. I don't know how many of you have had that happen on an embroidery machine, you know, sewing machine where your foot was down, you threaded it, and you took off and you got a great big nasty bird's nest in your under your bobbin that's why that's what happens with that so i'm going to switch back here i take off my cup my blade cover for the cover stitch table and put on another one this is the normal blade cover i unlock my upper looper cut my threads and my foot is up so I can just pull these threads out. It'd help if I cut them all. There we go. And with the serger, you always want to work from the back. You might want to turn your hand wheel a little bit, but turn it and then your threads always come out from the back. I don't know about you, but I like to cut threads to get rid of messes. I hate big messes in a machine. So pull those all out. And now I'll be ready to thread right back up for my overlock. Now, I'm going to let Kennedy take over for a moment here. And we'll see if you have some questions and answers. And I can set back up for the other side. Yes, perfect. All right, guys. Any questions? Anything? Any thoughts? Let me know what you guys think. Because I always like to sit and chat with you guys. Because... <clears throat> I sit here and watch the same way that you guys do. I'm like glued to the screen. You should see me behind the screen. I'm like staring at it all. I love watching it. Um, one thing I do want to mention though, when it comes to sergers, if you're on, you know, on the verge of, or on the, I don't know, on the fence about getting a serger, let me just tell you, and you can ask everybody in the comments because I've seen the same thing pop up all throughout the show. Sergers last 
so long. In terms of our service department, we don't get as many sergers compared to other machines. Um, They last years. I mean, I've seen comments of people having the same serger for 30 plus years. I know people who have had their serger for 10 years, 12 years. I'm sure Rosemary can say the same thing, but they last so long. And if you keep up proper maintenance, you know, like continuously cleaning it and just doing normal routine maintenance, you'll be set to have that machine forever. I promise you, especially with Baby Lock 2, it's they really put so much effort into the quality of their product. And I highly, highly recommend um, getting a serger if you're on the fence about it. Because even if, you know, you might not use it now, later down the road, there are so many things you can do a serger with. I mean, there's curtains, home, there's a home aspect of it. You can do home decor, clothing, um, you know, any other thing that you really can do a lot. I mean, if you just look up pictures of serger projects or serger inspiration, or even just look at some of our old videos, there's so much serger motivation out there, I should say. So highly recommend. I'm not, I'm just, I'm going to put that out there. And also again, Nick really worked hard to get some good specials for you guys. So if you guys are interested, highly recommend because I want to see you guys making some good stuff. So let me know. And if you do get one, tell me. I want to know and I want to see pictures of what you work on. And even if you already have a serger, join our Facebook group and post pictures of what you make. Let me know. I love seeing all your projects. It's so much fun. And I love talking with you guys about them, especially over the last week with Quilt Fest and all that stuff going on. Everybody's been posting pictures of their quilts or, you know, things that they've been working on. And I just get so motivated looking at everything. It's my favorite. I love it so much. See, I think about if I ever went to a convention or, you know, (laughs) a quilt event or a project event, I would be glued to all of the projects that I see. So that's my that's my way of learning is looking at projects and, you know, feeling the fabrics and, you know, all the stitches and all that kind of stuff. Maybe you guys are the same as me, but maybe I'm just by myself on that one. But highly recommend checking out a serger for sure. And Deb's over here, too, and I'm sure she can say the same thing. Sergers are great. (laughs) But yes, okay. Well, I wanted to let you guys know again in the description box if you were interested in learning more about Rosemary or learning a little bit more from her, or if you have a serger and are interested in one of her books, her amazing, really, really in depth serger books, highly recommend going to her Facebook group down in the description box. And I will also put the link down to down in the comments where you can just click on it and get over to her Facebook group. But she told me that a lot of you guys joined last week and that made me so happy because it's just more more people to get involved in the community and just a great little, we have a little family going on, I think, and I love it. It's great. And Belinda, I wanted to address your comment. Um, we are going to work on fixing that quilt entry. So I will probably reach out to you after the show and we will We'll get that taken care of. I promise. Just wanted to let you know. Um, But yes, this is great. I love this, guys. Um, Linda says, Linda said she buys her clothes online big and then alters them with her serger for a custom fit. See, what a great idea. I love this. Um, There's so many things you can do. I really want to try making my own clothes with a serger because I've never made clothing before. I've done other little projects. Like I did a bag. Um, I mentioned this last time. One time I took a fat quarter and folded it in half and kind of trimmed it up a little bit and just surged the sides and I made myself a bag. And it doesn't matter. I mean, it's just, it was perfect. It was a perfect little intro project, I'd say. It's, I love it. I love sergers, guys. They're so much fun. Um, let's see. Any comments? Any comments? Anything you guys are wondering about? Anything? While we get ready? I think Rosemary is ready, so we will get back over to her. But if you guys do have any more questions, keep them coming. I'm watching the comments, and I'll be able to answer any questions. But let's get back to Rosemary. All righty. Well, I got threaded all back up for the um, overlock. Um, and I wish I had time. I wish we did have all day long to run. I all know. Of stuff. Show you a fun project and all. So I just have to say, hey, join my group. And I, I do. Uh, I'm back in the swing of posting projects. Like I said, last Saturday we um, did one. And um, let's see. It's either I have to look at my calendar next Tuesday or the Tuesday after. We'll be doing um, another project that. Involve, it's mostly, I think, four threads. Let's see if I can 
see it up here. Let's see. Aha. I don't know how well you can see this little guy in the background. My head's in the way. But it's right behind us. I'll grab that in a second and show you. But we'll be making that one. Super easy. Matter of fact, I'm excited because I made that one for a uh, show that I did in Fresno several years ago. And everybody's kits were exactly the same. So that's been my demo for a while. But now I've chosen some really cool fabric that I can actually use in my own house because most of the samples I make, I don't because I take them with me and they could be colors that I really don't like. Now, speak, Kennedy was just talking to you about quilts. So how many of you out there quilt? I know I'm not going to get an answer right now, but I would imagine it's an awful lot of you. Did you know you could do your binding on a quilt, queen size quilt, and I think I mentioned this last week, in 20 minutes? Seriously. Um, because I know if I can do these things, you can. And I don't want to tell you anything that I think you can do with a serger that you couldn't, but I'll sure tell you the things that you can do with your serger and be successful. With quilting or binding, and speaking of quilting, some people do quilt because you have that five and a quarter, you know, space in here and you can use chain stitches. You can do your blocks separately and do all kinds of decorative stuff on your blocks and then put those blocks together. Uh, or you can do it traditional on the, on the machine. A lot of people now are embroidering blocks. I used to teach uh, Hoop Sister quilts and have two really awesome quilts that I did with that. I think my favorite was uh, Goose Tracks and Textures and New Techniques. And every block has got all kinds of amazing things on it. So there's no reason why you can't do that with a serger the same way and then put those blocks together. Then you could actually use when you put them together, after you join them, you can actually make your belt loops and stitch those down or fuse them down, especially if it's going to be a wall quilt. You can uh, fuse those down in between all your blocks and you can get some amazing things, not only quilts, but wall hangings as well. But now you say, how do I put on binding on a quilt? It's simple. You set your machine up for four thread. Now, those of you who don't have baby lock. This is not baby lock machine particular whatsoever. It's just a simple four thread. But in your lower looper, you put in fusible thread. And fusible thread is sort of satiny feeling. It's really cool. And it fuses when you iron it. So with something like this, you would simply um, pick a spot, you know, in the middle edge of your quilt here and leave yourself a tail. This one does not have the tail to come around and join it because most of you know how to join those. And I don't show that because my thing on showing you is just how to get the binding on. So once you surge along the edge, when you come to a corner, and I want you guys to practice this, just to get some fabric with batting. You could even use a piece of fleece and for your batting for practice like I did. Because I think I showed this at a show and just that's all I had in my kit with that uh, was uh, fleece. Stitch it down. When you get to the very corner down here, you're going to stitch. You're going to stop two stitches away from the, the um, corner. And then you're going to slowly take your hand, your hand wheel and bring your, your needles up. You're going to fold back your binding like you normally would if you're sewing it on by a sewing machine. You're going to go back. Fold it back like so, like you would. And then starting at the very end, oh, actually, when you get to that corner too, you want to pull your threads right in front of your needle to give it some slack to help it turn that corner. So you don't want a bunched up corner. Do the same thing for all corners. Guaranteed from setting up your machine to going all the way around that queen side quilt. You're done in 20 minutes. Then when you are through with all your corners and then you have laid your other end in here and cut that appropriately to um, make these match. You're going to flip that over. You can see from the sun front side, I have a nice little mitered corner. I lay that down in the back. It's kind of hard to show you this way. All along the edges, I fold that over. I take it to my ironing board and I iron that down. 
and I fuse it. Then I have a beautiful mitered corner. I'll try to have some bigger samples up when I teach my classes on my group so that you guys can actually see a finished product with a mitered corner. I have a little quilt that, a little wall hang I just finished that um, I'll do that on. Anyway, iron that all the way down. Then, because fusible thread is not like super guaranteed to hold forever, what I would do is run a light stitch either in the ditch or about a sixteenth of an inch over from the edge to make sure I captured that back. I make sure that my front and my back match perfectly by I put a pin in the seam here and I got to make sure that it comes out into my fabric on the back. So when I top stitch it down, that it is uh, secure. And that's all you got to do. And even stitching that is so quick. You can use the chain stitch on your serger to do that same thing. Um, so, and make it decorative. So really the sky is the limit on what you can do, but serging a quilt, binding on a quilt in 20 minutes is pretty amazing. So that's just one of the things you can do when it comes to quilting, but really you don't have to use a pattern for that. You can just come up with your own squares, choose um, the size that you want, so let's say nine inches, if you want nine inch squares, fuse the back of that fabric with a fusible interface and our stabilizer, similar to what you would use for embroidery. As long as it's pliable, I happen to like OESD because it's very pliable yet the um it fuses beautifully to the fabric it's not going to peel up so that one you don't use heat and speaking of those pay real close attention to whether they need heat or not if they don't need i mean not heat i'm sorry steam if they don't need steam and you steam it it's going to cause the front of your fabric to pucker up and you don't want to have to mess with that so if it says no steam don't steam it just the heat of the iron will help that fuse down. So if you're wondering, even on some of your embroidery, why your front has gotten so puckered, it's probably because you steamed that stabilizer or that fusible stabilizer on instead of just pressing it on. So remember that just has to be pressed. And um, so anyway, take that block. Once you've got it stabilized, just randomly stitch all over it. Do pin tucks, you know, do flat locking and weave ribbon in and out. There's so many things that you can do with this serger. The one pillow top I showed you last week, let me show you again here. This is something I just you know made up because I enjoy just sitting and creating things. And I'm not sure how close I can get up on some of these, but like this particular one, mm, There to go, right here. And I don't think you can see that too well, but what it is, it's a flat lock. And I uh, took um, heavy thread, about an eight weight thread, and I wove that in, you know, like over two, under two, back and forth. And then I took two more um, strands of the eight weight and did the middle, the red, and then two more on the side. So within that wide flat lock, I got six strands of thread. This is actually green and red. And I call that the watch band effect because it looks like a watch band. And, but you can uh, weave that in whatever patterns that you want. And so this is using the combination of the machine with the flat locking, the chain stitch, and here the cover stitch and just randomly create that. So you could actually make a small block like this for your quilts and you know create whatever patterns that you want and then again on the back is the fusible stabilizer so seriously the sky's the limit on what you can do with these things um i like being creative i like making some garments but if you guys are like me it seems like it's impossible finding a, a pant pattern that fits so if i can't find something that fits I'll just be creative and, and either add um, stitches to my pre-owned clothes or whatever I want to do, or home decor. I love making things with this serger that shows off the stitches, shows off other trims. Um, and remember, you don't have to have the baby lock for that. As long as you learn to use your serger, 
And the key to doing that, to learning all these cool techniques is using the serger. And I know sometimes that can be really frustrating when you can't make something work, but um, just take a deep breath, get that thing threaded right, on most all manual sergers, it's threading that lower looper first, getting that guy out of the way, and then the upper looper. And it has to be done in that order. If not, it's never going to work for you, no matter how many times you change the needle. And if your thread breaks on that, you must rethread those in order. But the idea is to get friendly with that serger and let it become your friend. And then you can go into all these cool techniques. One of the worst things you want to do is try to set it up and do these cool techniques immediately without knowing your serger, because then you're going to be facing frustration. And that really takes the fun out of surging uh, or doing anything is when you are frustrated with these things. So exactly, yeah. exactly. You you hit the mark on what surging is. And I love that you showed the example of quilting with a serger because I'm bad at explaining things sometimes, so I love that you pulled it out and, you know, really walked through it because a lot of people don't know that you it is such a time saver. And, oh, you know, tremendous. this particular hobby really, it can be tedious and it can be time consuming yeah. sometimes. So anything to really help, you know, speed up the process, especially if you have a business, definitely invest in something like this that can really step up your game and get you getting yeah. projects done way faster. Oh, it is such a time saver because I had a friend who quilted and she binding was the thing that she hated. And she had no less than 10 quilts on in her spare bedroom. And I said, what do you do with all these quilts? And she said, they all need binding. And I hate binding. <gasps> it's like, oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> easy. And I used to think it was tough. And so when I first started quilting, I made my first quilt when I was about 12. I used to help a neighbor lady who was almost blind thread her needles for her. And in turn, she taught me how to quilt. So I made a little tiny doll quilt. Then I didn't quilt again until the late 80s. And I made two quilts. I entered them in the fair and I got a blue ribbon on both of them. So, oh, my. okay. Yeah, I, that. I thought one was paper piecing and I had never done paper piecing. And then the other quilt, the bigger one, it was a lap size. Um, I, when it came to the binding, I thought, how am I going to do this? And I wasn't, that was before I had my baby lock. So I thought, I got to get that on even. I want to miter my corners. And I knew I'd be off somehow. So at that time, I used, instead of fusible thread, I used Seam Seam 2 strips. <gasps> I sewed my binding down on the top. And then I laid seam a seam two over the edge and I folded it over and it really did the exact same thing at, as the fusible thread. And my corners came out beautiful and nobody knew, you know, it's just a, a technique. It's not like cheating because it made it even for me and easy. So that's what gave me the idea later of using fusible thread instead of the seam a seam, a seam two, because that stuff is a lifesaver. And yes. Um, I had the blue ribbon on it and I was my corners were off on just two little places that I got marked down on by so I got like a 98 on it but still I was hey happy kid. anything <laughs> <laughs> anything yeah. not a hundred percent I said so you know nothing's perfect only God's perfect so it's like it's okay to get a 98 on it especially mm -hmm. when I was really still a quilting novice and so um and we all like shortcuts you know we we do so yeah um, no I so love I, it and I love everything that you've talked about today has just been so informative and so inspiring and I hope everybody here is motivated to try out a project try getting that serger out of the box I know it can seem scary and filling the spools I know but trust me you will not be sorry once you get the hang of it everything has a learning curve so once you get the hang yeah. of it it really you're off to the races. I mean, you will you will not believe what you create right right after. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. It, you just have to take that first step and be uninterrupted. You know, like with me, I have a new puppy. Well, he's fairly new, but he's in my way when I want to sit down and search. So you can't have that. You need uninterrupted time because you'll, you'll lose your flow. And so sit there with that study before you cut that initial thread that's on that machine. They tie that on there for a reason. Yeah. Uh, study that and see how it's threaded in your machine. Read that manual on that threading page and make yourself rethread that 
a good 10 times at least before you do anything. You want to get very familiar with threading that machine, even the baby lock, get familiar with it. Because seriously, nothing can be easier than these machines. It's, they're, they're just, they're such a no brainer, you know, and um, it's like the L'Oreal commercial, you know, I, it costs more, but I'm worth it. Yes. I I feel the same thing about baby lock surgeries. They're more, but you're worth it. And they are worth it. So more so worth it. it. Uh, Exactly. You know, your time is worth it. Your, you know, I like to cut down on frustrations as much as possible. And man, this thing does it. So yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. I am so happy. Yeah, I am just, I'm so happy that you were able to sit with us over these past two weeks and really give us a full rundown of surging and, you know, the cover stitch machines. They are so amazing. And I hope everybody enjoyed this series. You know, me and Rosemary chatted a bunch about this and trying to find the best things to do. And I think you nailed it, Rosemary. So thank you so much for coming on and joining us today. You are so welcome. And um, yeah, you guys come join my group. I uh, learn more yes. about the books. I don't sell the books online anywhere. They're only available through me by joining the group and messaging me. Uh, Or you can look up my name on Facebook. It's on Facebook. I go by Rosemary Saka Keen. And, but you can join my group and that's how I do this. The books, like I said, are are sold by me. And then you get entered into the two special uh, Facebook groups that are set alone just for those lessons. And then you get to learn most all that I know about surgery. Yes. And that's the best. That's the best. She is your go-to gal for anything surger. So highly recommend all of her links are down below. Highly recommend you join that group. A bunch of SP Nation is already in there. Rosemary told me. So that is super cool. Yeah, it was great. The first day, I think last Tuesday, I ended up with uh, 60 members just that day. And (sighs) since then, I, uh, yeah, admitted uh, well over 100, probably about 150 by now. And it was fantastic. Fantastic. So oh, I'm I so love, happy. You know, yeah, I love it. And so, Yay. yeah, Yay. it's kind of what, like I said, that this is my thing to do is, you know, I speak surger. Yes. And I love it. Well, Rosemary, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. I know you probably have so many projects to get through and classes to plan. So I will let you get back to it, but thank you again. And I hope to have love you back it. soon. <laughs> Yes, I would love to. This is a lot of fun. And so um, I'll think of more things to tell you. But like I said, this is just a snippet of what you the can do. Because of the iceberg. <laughs> the iceberg is exactly it. So um, yeah, I'll think of more things to do and have me on anytime. I'm, yes. I'm really happy to be here and I really appreciate this. Oh, uh, I love it. Thank you again, Rosemary. And we will talk very soon. Sounds great. Y'all have a good day. Bye bye. All right, you guys, what did you think? More so, I loved today's episode and I was so excited to have Rosemary back again. It has just been so fun, but now it is time for giveaways. Who is ready for some giveaways? Because I know I am. So let's get into it. Also, I know we were having issues with the music for the past couple of weeks. So if it gets loud, please feel free to comment and let me know because I don't want anything getting too loud for you guys. (laughs) All right, so let's get this music bumping and let's get to our giveaway. So I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see the wheel and we're going to spin and give away some stuff. What do you guys think? Do you want to do that? Because I want to. Okay, let's turn this up a little bit. Is that good? Okay, here we go. All righty, first up, we are going to be giving away a $100 gift card. So if you have any um, you know, accessories or any products you wanted or were interested in from today's show. Maybe you have a serger already and you want to buy some more things for it, some thread, anything you want to stock up on, this will be your chance. All right. So let's go ahead and spin and see who is going to win this amazing giveaway. So let's do it. All right. You guys ready? Let's do it. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's spin to win, guys. Oh, not us. (laughs) We're going to spin again. We're going to spin again. Don't worry. Let's spin. I would love to win a $100 gift card, but I got to give it to somebody else. I got to do it. Let's see. Let's see. 
S.L. Higby, congratulations. You have just won a $100 gift card to SMP. So if you are interested, go ahead and head to smplive.tv to claim your prize, and we will get that sent out to you via email. So again, congratulations, and we can't wait to see what you get. All right, next up, you guys, our world-famous so mats. These are amazing. I still haven't gotten one under my desk, but... I'm working on it, guys. I promise I'm going to get one under here soon. But these are the best. They are amazing and they help reduce noise and vibration from your sewing machine. And also, it's just a nice little pop of color in your sewing room. I love them. And we also have a cheetah print one. Highly recommend you grab that. And yeah, so you might be able to win one today. Let's see who is going to win a sew mat of their choice and size and color. It's great. Kathy said, Blueberry for me. Yes, everybody has their favorite colors. Yvonne Hudson, congratulations. You have just won a world famous SP so mat. Congratulations. Head to SMP, smplive.tv. Oh my goodness. To claim your prize, and we will get that out to you. Pick the size and the color that you would like, and we will get that right out to you. All right, what is next? We are going to be giving away a Singer Steam Craft Iron. Now, irons are so essential in sewing projects, embroidery, surging. I feel like that's the one common denominator that you can really use it for everything. Even quilting, I mean, it's just essential. So let's go ahead and spin and see who's going to win this Steam Craft Iron. And it's pink and it's so cute and it's actually really convenient. It's a pretty good size, so it's nice and portable. It's great. It's great. Kay Butterball, congratulations. You have just won a brand new Singer Steamcraft iron. Head to smplive.tv to claim your prize if you want that iron, girl, and we will get that out to you. All right, last up, we're going out with a bang because we don't have a show this week. So we are going to be doing the Encore 260A sewing machine, an amazing starter machine or travel machine, class machine. It's portable. It's super lightweight. And it has all your basic stitches and even a couple decorative and some lettering and monogramming stitches that will really just get you through any project. A great little sidekick. So let's go ahead and spin and see who's going to win this machine. Oh my goodness, you guys. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Kathleen Queen, congratulations. I know you were talking about perhaps getting a serger, but you just want a sewing machine. So congratulations, Kathleen. If you are interested, head to SMPT, SMP Live. Why am I stuttering over that? SMPLive.tv to claim your prize. We will get that shipped right out to you and you can start creating some amazing, amazing projects. All right, you guys. Man, the coffee got me this morning. I got to tell you. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well... That is going to wrap up our Serger Bootcamp series. Thank you so much to everyone who came on and joined me today and Rosemary with the amazing education. Without you guys, we would not be able to make these shows and do these shows. So thank you for joining us and learning with us and me because I've learned new things from these shows every single week and my brain, I just, I feel like a sponge of knowledge, you know? <laughs> All right. Let me know what you guys want to see from us next and I was going to say I'll see you guys next week, but it's Quilt Fest next week. So there's no Takeover Tuesday, but we're streaming for eight hours a day next week, five days a week, Monday through Friday. We are all yours and you can watch and hang out with us all day long. So I will see you guys all week next week. How's that sound? All right, you guys, I'm going to get out of here and continue working on Quilt Fest, but I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day and week. I hope you create something fun. And if you do, send me pictures. I always love to see. And I will see you guys so soon. All right. Bye, guys. I'll miss you so much until Monday. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Bye, guys.